hello guys so today we will be starting uh, a series of videos um, on uh, doing modeling using abac software so in today the first video we will try to uh, model some uh, very basic and very simple thing that is uh, a beam column and particularly they having the beam column joint so for this video i'm using this uh, model it is uh, taken from this paper you can have a look if you want to read this paper it's on retrofit technique for seismic upgradation deficient rc frames so i'm using uh, this you know beam column details are also given here and uh, i'll be using uh, this model uh, to draw in abacus and analyze it in abacus i i have also you know draw some details here here is the detail and simplify model we can see the height of the column and beam here is we have a roller support a hinge support and a force is applying here in this direction it is almost similar to what i have here in this paper so let's go to the abacus you know uh, the first thing you should do in abacus is to uh, set up your work directory from here you can click the file option and set work directory so it's here you can see it's c and temp i do not want this directory uh, actually the work directory should be your that folder where your um, odb files and other data are you know saved here because when you are working in abacus most in most cases almost in every case your odb file for example if you are carrying out uh, a detailed non-linear time history analysis so your odb file might be from 2 GB up to 10 uh, 15 GB depending on your model and your mesh size and all these things so you definitely need to save your work in such a drive that has more space so I'm going to save it here here so okay so I have set up my work directory now the next thing is that uh, uh, you should keep in mind is the unit consistency in abacus because uh, abacus unlike other software for example sap etabs uh, abacus does not have any units but when you define your particularly when you define your materials so you need to be consistent with the unit for example you can use uh, uh, if you just google it units in abacus so you can have some table you can also find this table in the abacus documentation so if you are using si unit or us units si unit in meters and in mm for example if you are using si unit in meters you need to have length in meters force in newton mass kg time in second stress in pascal energy in joule and density in kg per meter cube so you need to use all your uh, input uh, whether that is material property or that is your uh, loading protocols on your model or that is for example if you use uh, you know dead load or lab load on your model you need to have uh, n newton instead of in kgs or other units so similarly if you wish to use the acceleration unit so it should be uh, meter per second square not mm, foot per second square or mm per square so you need to be consistent with your units now the next thing is that uh, you need to uh, look after these things for example it is abacus using uh, doing modeling in abacus is you know uh, some kind of stepwise uh, uh, procedure for example first you need to define parts and then you need to define the material properties and the next thing is you need to assemble those parts which you have already defined and in the next step you is the step module where you need to define your step where that is a static 
or dynamic or mm, time history or whatever and the next is your interactions interactions mean when you you know tie or embed some uh, part of your uh, model for example if you have a beam column joint so you need to tie that you need to tie your beam with your column we will take a detail you know uh, look on all these modules stepwise and the next module is load you need to implement your loading protocol and also the boundary condition and the next is mesh you need to mesh your model and uh, optimization and then you can submit your job and after the job is completed you can visualize it so here in the first mm, uh, module which is part here you can you can also define these parts from here and also you can just click this icon parts so this window will pop up where you can name your part and select whether that is 3d 2d or um, the type where it is you know uh, deformable or discrete rigid and whether it is solid shell wire mostly for example if you are modeling a beam or column that is definitely a solid deformable section 3d and for example if you are modeling a rebar section so rebar is then a wire section so you need to choose wire from here anyhow because i have already defined some parts i will uh, go through these parts in detail for example when you click this thing let's let me show you part 7 whether that is your beam and you click continue so this window will appear where you can draw your beam for example the cross section of your beam and then give dimension to it so it's you know quite easy but i do not want it because i've already defined some parts starting with the beams if you look so i have my beam here with this dimensions which is already given in this paper i took this dimension from this published papers so here we have beam and uh, we have our column this is our column square shape column and the rest of them are uh, because it is a reinforced uh, concrete sections so i need to define the rebar and also the stirrups so the beam main rebars is it's you can see it's a wire feature and you it is just a wire feature it is 2.87 by the way i'm using meter as a unit as a meter uh, and uh, you know all these units which i showed you before so that's why it was 2.67 meters and also the other parts or beam stirrups you can see the stirrups wire feature and sections so this is my stirrup by the way an important thing to uh, you know mention here that when you model the section uh, uh, definitely for example it, if it is 12 feet the height of the column so your rebar should not be 12 feet you need to take care of the clear cover you need to minus your clear cover from that for example if you are uh, taking uh, 1.5 inch clear cover here and 1.5 inch clear cover here so it is 3 inches and uh, your uh, length of your rebar will be 11 feet and 9 inches instead of 12 feet so you need to take care of the clear covers as well while defining rebar section and also while define the stirrups you also need to take care of these things you can see here so this is the stirrups and these are the rebars you can see the stirrups are embedded inside the concrete region so it is the stirrup is not of the same size of the column or the beams anyhow so now when you have uh, defined all your paths the next thing is that you need to define material I already have two material in my library but uh, I will modify them and will use material data based on that property so damping I will delete that 
for the moment and the mass density and elastic modulus so normally uh, the mass density for reinforced concrete is 2400 kg per square meter and here is the elastic modulus and poisson ratio based on this paper you can see the compressive strength of concrete is 21 megapascal and steel bar have a yield strength of these but these are not the only properties that you will need there are you know a lot of uh, abacus properties which are particularly required for abacus for example yang modulus poisson ratio and all this stuff you can find it in the numerical in the literature review but anyhow based on this paper uh, it has 21 megapascal and using the uh, ACI code for finding the modulus of elasticity uh, which is you know EC 57,000 epsi frame in PSI or it is almost 4700 under root FC frame in megapascal so when I calculate uh, this on the basis of this my elastic modulus per 3000 PSI concrete is 21 538 megapascal but I'm not using megapascal as my unit I'm use using pascal which mean e power 6 I need to put here and this is the Poisson ratio and okay so here important thing to you know if you are using the elastic material now only these two properties are enough but if you are using the plasticity as well so you need to define the uh you know any kind of plasticity from here but the mostly used plasticity model in you know literature that i have observed is either the concrete damage plasticity model or drucker prager's model by the way uh, i wish to use you know the plasticity here as well so for that i will define the concrete damage plasticity okay so uh, for defining these property I need to look in the literature so there are a lot of you know mm, detailed literature on these concrete damage plasticity model you can just google it and find uh, the one that is suitable for you based on your region on your material so I will use this concrete damage plasticity model details uh, I also given the you know reference for it you can also find it from this paper so anyhow I will copy these okay so we will start from here again uh, I don't know but for some reason I was unable to copy these so we can copy it from here and paste it here so after the plasticity we can clip also the compulsive behavior and also the tensile behavior just uh, note the dimensions that I'm using Pascal here and here we can also choose the damage compressor damage but here I want to first copy these
so now we are done with the concrete material and I can click ok next thing is need to also define the rebar material so I already have elastic material but I want to use the plastic behavior this one so now our material is uh, defined so in the next step we will assemble that uh, we will assemble our model and we will continue with that step in the next video